2008, over one and a half million children in England have been identified as having special educational needs. These can range from Asperger's syndrome, dyslexia, speech and visual problems to emotional and behavioural difficulties. And governors have a special responsibility to these children. A good governing body and needs to have an oversight into all the special educational needs issues that a school might have. Um, and they need to take responsibility um, to ensure that provision is made for those young people in the school. And provision for these children is the task of special educational needs coordinators. Vital as SENCOs are, many governors don't fully understand what the role involves. At St Joan of Arc Catholic School in Rickmansworth, Alison Foster and Trish O'Kane share the role of SENCO. Our school has got 1,200 pupils roughly 170 on our special needs register but obviously that changes as we kind of assess children. As at most schools, Alison and Trish are supported by a team of learning support assistants who work with individuals or small groups. In addition, Alison and Trish devised a new approach to teaching some of their SEN students. Do we have to read that? You don't have to read it because all you're being asked is what form it is. So form is... A letter. What there's your answer. I think for a long time Alison and myself had looked at provision in school and felt that provision wasn't meeting children's needs in the best way we could. So we had a look at a plan we had to teach literacy subjects, the two of us, and to embed skills. So they set up what they call the transition group. We teach the transition group for English, history, geography and RE. They have most of their other curriculum lessons together and that's the same for every form group in Year yeah. 7. So they're not doing anything different other than being taught four key areas by us. For example, the geography class that I taught today, Trish has been doing um, common nouns and proper nouns with, with that group of children. And that's so easy to build into the map work they were doing today. Nature reserve is the common noun. Because if we look on the map, we'll find other nature reserves here. Because yeah. they're common. The nature reserves are all the ones with the pictures of the ducks. Now we've got a transition group in every year in Key Stage 3 and children are getting much more individual and whole group attention. So there are children who would have got an hour of support a week who are now getting 20 hours of support a week. Today the transition group are working on the KITE project, a new scheme of work devised by Alison and Trish. We wanted to put together a curriculum that was going to be cross-curricular in line with the new Key Stage 3 curriculum. We came up with the KITE project and I think I just said, oh, something like KITES, you know, and we could put into that D&T and music and media and all these sorts of things. I think we managed to attach a KITE to every curriculum subject. We're architecting our KITES and um, I've actually, I'm doing supercars because they're my favourite things cars are. We've learned English history where the first like kite was made so it was in China. It's been fun because of you get to learn different things in different subjects by one thing, kites. Planning provision for SEN students begins before they even arrive at St Joan of Arc School. I'm on my way to a local primary school um, as part of a transition package for a year six student. In the May of the year that they're starting school in September, we then by that time have a list of all our children that are coming to us who are on primary school special educational needs registers. So those children come in in May and we test them and we feed back to, to, to parents and report back to them and we use a range of tests. We do NFER CAT tests which the rest of the cohort do in September, it's just that we do them early with these children um, and also reading and spelling. It tells you a lot but it, you know, it's nice to see the child and see them in situ in the primary school. You've already visited us one evening and I know you've got other family at school so you probably know quite a bit about our school already don't you? Right. But Mrs Dunlop is going to come up before September next year, so before you come up properly in your Joan of Arc uniform and everything, we thought Mrs Dunlop would come up and spend a few days with us, with you, at St Joan of Arc, so that you can kind of get to know your way around the building, get to know people in the school. Yes, we'll really look forward to that, won't we, Kim? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a really good working relationship with yeah. Alison and Trish. You were always welcome to go into St um, Joan of Arc within uh, Alison or Trish's classes to observe them teaching our children. Alison and Trish are easy to speak to and get hold of and they've filled me in on everything that they're doing. They've shown me around um, and Kim okay. as well so and they've to told me step by step what's going to happen and exactly where Kim will be. Back at St Joan of Arc School, part of Alison and Trish's brief is to work with other teachers to help them support the SEN students in their classes. He does make his point. Yes, he does give an explanation. He actually, how does he justify? At the very beginning of the year, Senko has talked to all the staff and will identify particular children who we may not um, be aware of or who may have a particular concern that we haven't been used to dealing with before. And if necessary, they will actually run um, a CPD evening for staff to come along. We produce some of our own documents. We've got something called Tips for Teachers, which is just a very sort of, you know, if, if you've looked at the SEN register and you're going to meet a child who's got an autistic spectrum disorder and it will help you with some strategies for dealing with that. We also do mandatory um, CPD for NQTs and new staff as well. And the Senkos sit in to monitor lessons to make sure the needs of SEN students are met. In the science lesson today that I was in monitoring and I was looking at the learning of one of the transition groups, he was aware he had children in the group with speech and language issues who would need to see a visual representation of what they had to follow. So he had adapted his curriculum to meet the needs of that group. Every teacher is a teacher of children with special educational needs. Um, and it is everybody in the school's responsibility to ensure that they get the education that they need. What the SENCO will do is coordinate that provision to ensure that it is actually happening. Something else Alison and Trish have done is to create the role of mentor for SEN students. We've got a mentor, Claire Lambert, who was an LSA in our department. She was really interested in mentoring and it was something she looked into a course and came back and asked us about it. I see children who are on the special needs register right through from year six before they come to the school through to year 11 and some post 16. And I do revision skills with them, uh, careers. I have found the perfect course for you at a local college <coughs> and it's travel and tourism. It's I have meetings here with um, Miss yeah. Lambert and it's like talking about home life family life, um, careers, things like that really, and what I'm going to do at college next year. So what role do governors have in SEM provision at St Joan of Arc School? Janet Ward is the governor with responsibility for students with special educational needs. I wanted to help with SEM because all my life I've been aware that other people who may fail exams and uh, not be as successful academically when at school can be equally intelligent, equally bright, and do so often need help when you have to look at people like Einstein and things who didn't do well at school. Having Janet as our SEN governor has been fantastic. She's been the SEN governor since we became SENCOs here, and I think because she's got a teaching background as well, her experience in itself is fantastic for us to tap into that. I try and come in every week, and that gives me enormous advantage over other governors because I can see how the pupils are behaving generally, what sort of atmosphere there is in a class. Janet can look at it from a different point of view as a governor of the school and give us a different slant on something whereas we're only looking at things from one perspective. Today Janet is sitting in on a meeting with a visiting speech and language therapist. Okay. So I think as it's a new programme rather yeah. than overwhelming us all if we were to focus on part one, yep. first of all. Liaising with external agencies is an additional part of the SENCO role. When a new statement to child comes in, they could have maybe five or six extra agencies working with them, and that takes up a colossal amount of our time. Some of the external agencies that we work with are obviously the education psychologist, behaviour support team, CAMS, speech and language therapists, occupational therapists. So there's a huge number of people who are coming in and out of our department regularly. An important issue for governors is how SEM provision is funded. None of the SEN money that comes into a school is actually ring fenced for SEN. Um, and so therefore, the school can spend it on whatever they want. I just think it's very important that you know, there is somebody on the governing body working with the SENCO who can actually at least know how much that money is 
and help make sure that it is being used for the appropriate um, reasons. Something all governors need to be aware of is new legislation about SENCOs that will shortly come into force. There are some new regulations um, going through Parliament at the moment. They've been through the consultation stage um, and they are to be implemented from September 2009. Um, the first big change in, in those, those regulations is that the SENCO has got to be a qualified teacher or the head teacher. I think it's really important that SENCOs are qualified teachers. I think in terms of offering advice to your colleagues, it's very important that they see you as being equal to them in terms of being a teacher and going through the same things that they go through. Governing bodies are going to have to ensure that there is a SENCO appointed who is a qualified teacher and where possible are actually a member of the senior leadership team. If they're not a member of the senior leadership team, there should be somebody on the leadership team who has responsibility for SEN and inclusion and who is the line manager of the SENCO. In order to influence policy in your school and make policy into action, it's really important that you are part of that senior leadership discussion. I think there's things that we would like to see happening that, that you can't you can't directly influence that only through your, your line manager. And, and as supportive as they are, sometimes I do think um, you can lose things in translation. Also, from September 2009, new SENCOs appointed to the role will have to undergo accredited training. Um, and this is training that is being funded from the government and will be at master's level um, and will prepare all new SENCOs um, for the role of the future. Just under a minute, and then I'm going to want some feedback. At an evening workshop, Trish and Alison are fulfilling another key part of their SENCO role, working with parents of SEN students. We try and run a workshop for, for parents once a term, and it's about helping them to support their children at home. In some instances, some of your children will have problems with more than one of these things, or just one of them. The governors or too the have a duty to these parents. Mistakes, the governing body do have to report to parents annually. Depends. Um, as part of a, a, a bigger report on the policy for SEN in the school. The SEN policy is written by, by myself and Trish and the governors, but we showed it to Janet obviously when we rewrote it, um, and then it's ratified by the governors. The parents of SEN students at St Joan of Arc find the support offered by the school extremely valuable. It gives us a good opportunity to see how the children are being taught at school. It gives us an idea of how to help them at home with their homework. So you can understand more what they're bringing home, what they're coming up against in class. And what's been fantastic has been the sense that, that they're onto it immediately, they're onto all her strategies for avoiding how to do things, they're aware of any sort of character things that she does, things that she's interested in which they'll then um, start to develop. So it makes you feel very, very sort of safe with your child in the school. If there's an issue or a discussion they've had with one of the professionals that support my child, they have phoned me at home in the evening had a long discussion, no uh, time has not been an issue, it's been really, really supportive.